The Philippines is the most difficult country to conquer. But why? There are eight reasons why the Philippines is the most difficult country to invade by any power. Although it was invaded numerous times in the past, but it's difficult and I'm going to explain why later. The Philippines is an archipelago of over 7,000 islands has historically proven to be one of the most difficult countries to conquer. Although Spain colonized the Philippines for more than 300 years, their initial conquest was fraught with difficulty. From the moment they set foot in the Philippines, they faced significant challenges, even reaching the shores. The Philippines is an island nation in East Asia. The country has a long history of being invaded and conquered. The Spanish first took control of the Philippines in 1521, following the Spanish-American War of 1898. The U.S. invaded and conquered the Spanish. In World War II, Japan invaded the Philippines and controlled the country until 1945. The Philippines finally gained independence in 1946. Without further delay, let's explore the reasons why the Philippines is the most difficult country to conquer. 1. The Philippines archipelago nature makes invasion nearly impossible. One primary reason the Philippines is exceptionally difficult to invade is its extensive archipelago structure. With over 7,000 islands, the Philippines presents a formidable challenge to any invading force. Major population centers are located on larger islands like Luzon, Cebu, and Mindanao, but the country comprises numerous smaller islands as well. This geographic complexity creates significant logistical difficulties. An invading army would need to execute amphibious landings on multiple islands and then engage in continuous battles across different terrains to subdue the nation entirely. Amphibious operations are notoriously complex and risky, requiring the coordination of land, sea, and air forces. Defenders familiar with the local terrain and conditions have a substantial advantage. Moreover, maintaining supply lines over vast stretches of ocean is fraught with difficulties and vulnerabilities. The combination of these factors, geographic dispersion, the complexity of amphibious assaults, and the challenges of sustaining long supply lines, renders the Philippines an extremely challenging target for invading forces. 2. Harsh Tropical Climate the Philippines' tropical climate significantly complicates any invasion efforts. The country's intense heat, frequent typhoons, the climate presents numerous challenges for foreign armies. These harsh conditions are not just physically demanding, but also strategically disadvantageous. The heat can cause dehydration among soldiers, reducing their combat effectiveness the Philippines is one of the most typhoon-prone areas in the world, with an average of 20 typhoons entering its vicinity annually. These storms can disrupt supply lines, destroying infrastructure, and hinder military operations. Furthermore, the mosquito-borne disease, like malaria, has historically plagued invading forces. Symptoms like high fever, chills, and severe headaches can hinder invading forces ability to invade, making it difficult to maintain an effective fighting force. Let's take a look at some examples. In the Spanish conquests, during their colonization efforts, Spanish forces often struggle with tropical diseases. Malaria and other tropical illnesses decimated troops, prolonging their military campaigns and complicating governance. In the Philippine-American War, U.S. troops suffered from diseases like malaria and dengue, which significantly hampered their operations. Also during World War II, during the Japanese invasion and subsequent American liberation, both sides faced severe difficulties due to the tropical climate. Japanese forces, initially unaccustomed to the environment, suffered from disease 
and heat-related issues. Similarly, American troops, although better equipped, still face substantial losses due to malaria and other tropical diseases. 3. Diverse and Resilient Populace The Philippines is characterized by a highly diverse population, consisting of different ethnic groups, each with distinct languages, cultures, and traditions. This diversity presents a significant obstacle to any conquering force attempting to impose uniform control or governance. The Philippines is home to more than 100 ethnic groups, including the Tagalog, Cebuano, Ilocano, Bicolano, Waray, and many others. Each group has its own unique cultural practices, social structures, and historical experiences. Furthermore, there are more than 170 languages spoken across the country. While the majority of Filipinos are Roman Catholic, there are significant Muslim populations, particularly in Mindanao, as well as indigenous animist beliefs and other Christian denominations. This religious diversity further complicates efforts to create a unified system of governance. Also, Filipinos have a long history of resisting foreign domination from pre-colonial tribal conflicts to fighting against Spanish and American and Japanese colonizers, the people of the Philippines have consistently demonstrated resilience and unwavering spirit of resistance. Despite their diverse backgrounds, Filipinos have shown an ability to unite against common threats. This was evident in various uprisings against Spanish rule, such as the Katipunan-led Philippine Revolution. It's also worth mentioning that during the Spanish occupation in World War II, Filipino guerrillas conducted effective resistance operations. Let's take a look at some examples of resistance. During the Spanish colonial period, many revolts such as the Silang Revolt and the widespread Katipunan-led revolution, exemplified by the Filipino resistance against Spanish rule, these uprisings were often coordinated across different ethnic groups, showcasing a united front against the colonizers. Another example, during the Philippine-American War, Filipino forces led by figures like Emilia Aguinaldo engaged in both conventional and guerrilla warfare, resisting American occupation despite facing a technologically superior enemy. The Hagbalahab guerrilla movement played a crucial role in resisting Japanese forces. Their knowledge of the local terrain and support from the civilian population allowed them to effectively harass and undermine the occupiers. The combination of ethnic diversity, cultural richness, and a strong tradition of resistance makes it exceedingly difficult for any foreign power to conquer and maintain control over the Philippines. The populace's resilience and ability to unite against external threats ensure that any attempted conquest would be met with formidable and sustained resistance. 4. Strategic Guerrilla Warfare Filipino fighters have a rich tradition of employing guerrilla tactics to great effect. These tactics have consistently frustrated and weakened larger, more conventional armies attempting to impose control over the Philippines. Filipino guerrillas excel in launching surprise attacks on enemy forces, quickly withdrawing before a counterattack can be organized. This approach minimizes their own casualties while inflicting damage on the opponent. Also, they often target infrastructure such as supply lines, communication networks, and transportation routes to disrupt enemies' logistical support and operational capabilities. The diverse and challenging geography of the Philippines, including dense jungles and intricate river systems, provide ideal conditions for guerrilla warfare. Local fighters leverage their familiarity with the terrain to evade and outmaneuver larger forces. For example, during the Spanish colonial period, the Philippine Revolution, the Katipunan, led by figures like Andres Bonifacio and Emilio Aguinaldo, used guerrilla tactics against Spanish forces. 
the revolutionaries conducted ambushes, sabotage Spanish supply lines, and utilized their knowledge of local landscapes to resist Spanish control effectively. The same thing happened during the Japanese invasion. During World War II, Filipino guerrilla groups, including, played a crucial role in undermining Japanese occupation. They carried out strategic sabotage, such as destroying bridges and railways. They also conducted ambushes on Japanese patrols and provided intelligence to Allied forces. Their actions significantly weakened Japanese control and contributed to the eventual liberation of the Philippines. And not to mention the Moro Rebellion. In Mindanao, Muslim resistant fighters have a long history of resisting foreign rule, utilizing guerrilla tactics. They resisted Spanish, American, and Japanese forces. The Moro Rebellion against American forces in the early 20th century saw fighters employing hit and run tactics. The effectiveness of Filipino guerrilla warfare lies in its ability to inflict sustained damage on occupying forces while avoiding direct large-scale confrontations that could lead to heavy casualties. This form of warfare is resource efficient and capitalizes on the local population support and intimate knowledge of the environment. It forces occupying armies into a prolonged conflict, draining their resources over time. 5. Colonial Legacy The Philippines' history of colonial rule under Spanish American has profoundly shaped the nation's identity and sense of resilience. These experiences have imbued the Filipino people with a deep sense of nationalism and a collective memory of resistance, which fuels their strong determination to defend their sovereignty against any would-be conquerors. Modern Filipino society remains vigilant against any form of external control or influence. This is evident in the active political engagement of the populace and the robust public discourse on issues of national sovereignty. 6. Cultural and Psychological Warfare The Filipino spirit of Bayanihan or community cooperation and deeply ingrained values of freedom and independence create a powerful psychological barrier against conquest. This cultural resilience make prolonged occupation very difficult for any foreign power. The population's willingness to endure hardship in the face of adversity plays a crucial role in their resistance to external domination. Bayanihan or community cooperation. It basically refers to the tradition of mutual aid and community support. This cultural trait is exemplified in practices such as collective farming, communal construction projects, and mutual assistance during crisis. It fosters a strong sense of community and mutual responsibility, something that the West seriously lacks. Furthermore, Filipinos have a long history of valuing their freedom and independence. It's reflected in their folk stories, songs, national symbols, which celebrates heroes who fought for liberty and justice. The Filipino spirit of resistance was evident during the numerous uprising against Spanish rule. Leaders like Lapu Lapu, who resisted Ferdinand Magellan in the Battle of Mactan, are celebrated as symbols of defiance. During the revolution against Spain, the sense of Bayanihan was crucial. Communities provided food, shelter, and logistical support to revolutionaries. The collective effort of various groups, despite ethnic and regional differences, showcased the power of community cooperation, or Bayanihan. Also, Filipino fighters during the Filipino-American War relied heavily on local support networks. Villagers and townspeople provided intelligence and supplies. And this is the work of Bayanihan. The cultural and psychological resilience of the Filipino people creates a significant challenge for any occupying force. The strong sense of community and mutual support means that resistance movements 
are well supported and difficult to eradicate. Additionally, the population's deep-rooted values of freedom and independence mean that they are willing to endure prolonged conflict and hardship. Do you think conquering the Philippines is an easy task? And would you like to add more to the list? Why do you think it would be difficult for any invading force to invade the Philippines?